So what I like to do is first uh, think about the objective of the paper. And while this may seem really straightforward and a good paper's title really should always make this very clear, when you start looking into the literature, some, some of these titles are three lines long, and it, it's really not always straightforward to pull it out. But generally speaking, I like to think that you should find this information in the title. What, what's their overall goal? And then I think about what's the rationale? What, why did they do this study? What, what's the point? And, and a, a, this can be found, this information can be found in the introduction. And a good introduction starts wide and it narrows down to the specific study. So they start off with broad points of significance and then what's specifically known in the field. And you may read a paper and think, wow, that's really cool. And then you realize that's already known. This is a very incremental step forward. So the introduction is where you should find information in the literature. And then it should end with, well, what's the gap in the field? What do we, what do we not know? and then what's this paper going to address. So that's, that's really the rationale and, and it's usually found in a very compact format in the, in the introduction. And based on this rationale, a good paper should formulate a central hypothesis. And while this seems like a core, it's a core scientific uh, aspect. It's the, the basis for the scientific method. Not all papers really explicitly tell you what their overall hypothesis is. So it's, and, and there's often several ways you could formulate a hypothesis. But I encourage you, and I always think, well, what, what, are, they, what's, what are they testing? And a hypothesis, remember, is not a question. It's a guess. It's, it's a statement that can be tested. And that's the next point is, what are the tests? How are they testing this hypothesis? And this can be found in the results and the figures. And as I go through a paper, I like to think about each figure. How does that relate to this hypothesis? Is it consistent with the hypothesis? Is it irrelevant? Sometimes there's figures that really don't test the central hypothesis. They might enhance the paper by providing some significance, relating it to other work in the field or something but not testing their specific hypothesis. Which, by the way, if you can't figure it out from the abstract, then there's a problem with how the paper was written, is how I would, would say it. Finally, what are the conclusions? First, did, are their results consistent with their hypothesis? Can you think of other tests of that hypothesis uh, that, hypothesis that should have been run? Um, so, you know, this is simply, uh, you know, is it yes or no, right? Did they, did they test their hypothesis rigorously? And if so, is it, are, are their results consistent with that? But then furthermore, the, uh, the conclusion should also tell you a little bit about the significance. In, in, you know, are there basic fundamental principles of, the, of science that we're learning from this paper? or particularly in pharmacology of the synapse, maybe there's some translational value, some, something that, that can lead us on to new clinical developments. Those are often things that should be found, particularly in the medical literature. So these are the basic uh, properties I look for when I read a paper, and I think in classes it's really helpful to literally write these things out so that you know how to um, discuss and interact with other people that have read the paper. So that's it.